This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, will Blockstream filter out CSAM? As a father myself, I want to start out by saying that I find this to be the saddest and most disgusting topic imaginable. And I'm also very unhappy that a lack of adversarial thinking across large portions of the Bitcoin community has led us to this place right now. CSAM, of course, stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material. We're going to be talking about censorship, we're going to be talking about spam, and we're going to be talking about CSAM as it relates to the Bitcoin network and changes that are in progress. This quote from Adam Back, as cited by Bitcoin News, quote, you need to decide which is more important to you, censoring spam or having Bitcoin remain uncensorable. I know where I stand. Filtering transactions, I would say here, is not censorship. Censorship is, for example, when the government says not to interact with this particular Bitcoin address that's related to North Korean hackers. Filtering is not about censoring financial transactions. It's about your node deciding which transactions to hold in its mempool, which is the waiting room for unconfirmed transactions. It's about your node deciding which transactions to hold in its mempool and to relay to others, to other nodes. For example, if someone sends a dust transaction to your node, your node will filter it out and not relay it. That's filtering, that's not censorship. If someone sends you a transaction that contains more than 40 bytes of non-monetary data in an op return, your NOTS node will filter it out and not relay it. That's filtering, that's not censorship. And again, here we're talking about an unconfirmed transaction that hasn't yet been included in a block by a miner. All Bitcoin nodes have been doing filtering for years from the beginning, and somehow Bitcoin has survived. It's not filtering that causes mining pool centralization. Mining pool centralization is a big problem. We've been talking about it a lot on this channel, but that's derived from the peculiarities of Stratum V1, not because Bitcoin nodes failed to relay enough spam over the past 10 years, obviously. All Bitcoin nodes, both core and NOTS nodes, have been filtering out large op returns since 2014. Bitcoin NOTS sets the default at 40 bytes, and Bitcoin Core sets the default at 80 bytes. But this will be changing with Bitcoin Core version 30, which I believe is coming out in October. This new version will allow nodes to relay much larger op returns, up to 100,000 bytes per op return. And these op returns, of course, contain non-monetary data most of the time. Now, unfortunately, some of those unconfirmed transaction op returns will invariably contain very nasty images, including disgusting things like illegal explicit content involving minors, CSAM, as we said. This content will be only weakly encrypted with a key residing on your node. This content will need to be downloaded by your node, decrypted, and examined. And when that happens, you're going to have unencrypted CP or CSAM sitting on your computer. And then your Bitcoin node, Bitcoin Core 30 node, is going to send that CP to other nodes, that CSAM to other nodes. Bitcoin NOTS nodes, by contrast, will immediately kill this transaction and not send it to anyone else. Not because your node knows that it's CP or CSAM, but because Bitcoin NOTS nodes are focused on Bitcoin as a monetary network and thus see no need to relay large blobs of non-monetary data. We've been talking a lot on Twitter, on X, about information theory and whether you can embed data in various ways. Here's Adam Back saying information theory one, Luke Dasher zero. Now information theory teaches us that all data is ultimately just zeros and ones and can be expressed as numbers, images, or other types of files. And so you cannot stop people embedding data using steganographic techniques. That's definitely true in theory. Of course, once you leave the ivory tower, you'll very quickly discover that not all data is treated the same in the real world. If you take CSAM and embed it in the Bitcoin blockchain using naked pub keys, you're a disgusting loser who's contributing to a tragedy of the commons. But most Bitcoiners who are looking at that mind block that contains that CSAM will not even know that it's there and are obviously not interested in discussing stuff like that anyway. They're not even looking for it. And it would require advanced extraction techniques to actually view that image if it was done using bare pub keys. Now let's contrast that with having an unconfirmed, not yet included in a block, an unconfirmed op return transaction sitting in your very own mempool that you control and that contains CP or CSAM. No advanced extraction techniques are required to view the CSAM. It's just sitting there right after the opcode and it's very easy to reconstitute it. No advanced techniques required. This is what op returns look like and we can see what's in the op return right here 
it's very easy to see. And when you run your own node, it's very easy to see. Adam has made it quite clear, Adam Back has made it quite clear that he plans on running Bitcoin Core 30 when it comes out. So I'm gonna assume that he'll be running it both personally and for Blockstream based on his recent rhetoric. Adam is obviously founder of Blockstream. Here's Adam saying, I'll probably be running Core 30 and optionally a patch for preferential peering if someone writes one. There are strong, maybe stronger arguments that minor centralization risk is a bigger risk than JPEG spam. Of course, as we just discussed, this is caused by Stratum V1. It's not caused by JPEG spam anyway. And he says it can't really be stopped anyway. Um, and so let's look where Blockstream is headquartered. Uh, Bloomberg here says they're headquartered in Montreal, but they obviously do business all over the world. And consumers and businesses interact with their software. For example, the Blockstream app, which is a great app that you can have on your on your phone and you can link, link the Blockstream Jade hardware wallet to it, etc. But this app is obviously using it if you're using it in that naive uh, sort of consumer way, it is. It will be running uh, using one of Blockstream's uh, one of Blockstream's Bitcoin nodes. So the big question for Blockstream, as a large corporation that operates all over the world, will your company nodes be relaying the CSAM that makes its way into the upper turns of large unconfirmed transactions, or are you going to filter it out? And I would ask Alex over at River the same question because he's come out as a strong supporter of Bitcoin Core 30. He says, at River, we will continue to run Bitcoin Core because it's the only properly maintained Bitcoin node software. Well, that's not true because with Bitcoin Knots, you basically get all the eyeballs of Bitcoin Core, plus someone who seems much more aware of what's going on, which is Luke Dasher, plus a couple other devs at this point. It's one thing to be storing a ledger of historical monetary transactions in your corporate node that might contain some dirty pictures that were deeply embedded in the blockchain in 2012 using advanced steganography. It's quite another thing to be actively relaying new nasty images all across the world in 2025. Nasty images that haven't yet made their way into the blockchain, but will probably be mine soon because you are actively participating and helping to spread them all around the world. A corporate entity must follow the laws of the countries that it operates in, and in all civilized countries, obviously, all civilized countries have strict laws about CSAM as they should. And again, this is not just about viewing life through some sort of status lens. I would ask you, Adam and Alex, as fellow human beings who probably have children like I do, will you feel good about relaying CSAM around the world and actively helping it to get into the chain? Or are you gonna filter out those nasty images? That's the real question. Or would that be censorship? Are you gonna call that censorship? Again, we're not talking about financial transactions. I'm fine with bad people doing transactions, doing financial transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain to make that very clear. But this is something very different. These are non-monetary transactions that really don't belong there. And if they get put there in any significant quantity, this is gonna cause huge, huge problems for the Bitcoin community. If you're able to easily filter out these nasty images from your mempools, and of course each node has its own mempool, if you're able to easily filter out these nasty images from your mempools by running Bitcoin knots, or node software that has similar filters. I suppose you could modify Bitcoin Core 30. You could fork it and modify it to add these sort of filters. Of course, at that point, you'd probably be running the same filters that Luke's running in Bitcoin Knots. But here's the point. If you're able to easily filter out these nasty images from your mempools by running Bitcoin Knots or node software that has similar filters, and you choose not to do it, then it's really on you, both from a legal and a moral perspective. So Adam and Alex, I would say you're both legends that I look up to, and both of you have been very kind to me over the years. So this is not intended as some sort of gotcha. I'm trying to pick large companies rather than picking on very small Bitcoin startups. And River and Blockstream are both great companies. They can take this sort of heat. So this is not intended as a gotcha. Consider it to be my contribution towards the kind of adversarial thinking that I wish more supporters of Bitcoin Core would be engaging in in 2025. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.